So it pretty much works by um, first building a time series model, uh, which is used to compute the expected value at time t, uh, and then a number of errors, which are computed by comparing the expected value to the actual value that is at time t. And then we automatically determine the thresholds on the errors and then output the most probable anom anomalies. So just uh, like with our supervised learning setup for classification and regression, um, the first step you would take here is to create your workspace and select your model type. So I'm going to just uh, create, um, I think it's the eighth today, isn't it? Or the ninth? Eight. It's the eighth, okay, that's a good start. Now I'm gonna select anomaly detection. I'm going to go in. So this is the main page that we have right here to set up our anomaly detection. The first thing I'm going to do is select the, the, the data, that I my time series data. So I already have a, a little network uh, example here, network traffic example. Um, as usual, I could do some Cloud9 QL manipulation on that data if I wished. Um, I'm not going to do that here, but I can if, if I wish. Um, now I need to select my, my uh, x-axis x variable which in time series would be your date or time uh, field. And then the numerical attribute that I wish to uh, do my anomaly detection against. So here I'm gonna choose a remote ISP. Um, from there, I have um, several algorithms uh, that I can choose from um, to run this data through. So I'm gonna choose the Olympic seasonal naive model here. I can also preview my data before I go any further, just to make sure that it looks, the, the incoming data looks as I expect. And then I'm going to run my analysis. So as you can see, um, that went through and ran and it, it highlighted some anomalies. I can also go into the settings on this and change the band that I want to look at. If I, I could lower that band, it would rerun. Um, and obviously the anomalies detected would be uh, fewer. So basically what I was doing there was I was just basically changing the, the confidence here, that confidence level right there. I can then go in and add another analysis. I might want to do um, an, a different algorithm. So I might want to do a moving average, and another analysis, slightly different. I can zoom in and have a look um, at uh, what, what it's saying right there. So, um, and I can keep going and add, uh, build up my portfolio of, of time series uh, anomaly analyses on this page. Now for each one of these, you see that um, there are several options. I can set um, alerts for each one and each alert can be different on a different uh, looking at a different thing so if i select on alerts here i obviously give it an alert name and then i can select alert alerting frequency i can also skip if the if the alert is exactly the same as the last alert um, and then i have um, several options it's very similar to our current alerting um, options with our regular data sets and also with our email functionality so you can email the um the, the this anomaly uh, or the results of this anomaly detection. Um, and you can also attach the full uh, data set uh, as a CSV, if you wish. You can also call a third, uh, an API to a third, uh, third party product um, um, uh, with that uh, CSV as, uh, in the payload. And you can also uh, Slack that, that, that data to a, a channel as well. So for each one of these analyses, you have the option to set its own alert right there. And then another thing that we have here is you can also save these widgets. And by saving these widgets, you can then syndicate this data onto a dashboard that your users can consume. So they don't have to, your users don't have to come in to the machine learning module to see the results of this analysis. I can, for example, save this widget as um, uh, August 7th, for example. And then when I go into a dashboard, I can then just drag and drop that into, into the, for syndication, uh, for regular syndication for my users. So again, they don't have to go into the machine learning module to actually be able to do that. For more information on how to get the best out of NOE, please visit noe.com university. Thanks for watching and see you next time.